this morning, a closer look at the latest diet craze to sweep the nation called intermittent fasting. That's right. It involves eating only during specified windows of time each day. We're going to talk about the pros and cons with our man, Dr. Oz, in a moment. But first, let's hear from viewers and some members of our own staff who are giving the trend to try. I've been doing the 10 hour window. So I was eating eight hours a day, lunch, snack, dinner. I intermittent fast from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. I can't do the full day fast. I just feel like it doesn't fit into my schedule. I just started intermittent fasting and I gotta tell you, I am starving. I like the fact that I don't go to bed feeling I was bloated. My clothes are starting to fit a little bit better. There are some days I just feel like I need to eat, and some days I just don't feel like I need to eat as much. It definitely makes me feel like I'm, you know, refreshed for the day. I've been doing this for about a year and a half. I've lost 30 pounds. I went from 245 pounds. I'm currently 189 pounds. I've lost 10 pounds and three inches in my waist. I think it makes you a lot more aware of what you're putting into your body. Intermittent fasting has really changed my life. But that, well, just a few of them. Yeah. How do you figure out if intermittent fasting is for you? Dr. Mehmet Oz, host of the Dr. Oz Show, is here to help. Dr. Oz, as you know, Carson and I decided to start experimenting with this mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago. So we've been trying to intermittent fast, too. Yeah. We have a lot of questions for you. Yeah. First of all, how do you pick? Like, I've been, I'm in my second week of it, and I'm on a 16-hour fast in an 8-hour window of eating. So I eat from noon until 8. That's my window. Right, so let me, let me just take a step back. So religions have been touting the benefits of fasting for your soul for millennia, right? Yeah. But doctors actually for about 100 years have known that it was good for mental health. It, it was good for weight loss. It was good for if you're a diabetic, uh, good for intestinal issues, all those things. And actually, it was chronicled beautifully. Dr. Krupen, head of our medical unit, wrote a great book, What to Eat When, which has been the foundation of what we've been talking about on the show this year. And it's all about these issues. Now, I'm going to answer your question, but I don't want people being scared off. Ideally, ideally, you can hack fasting. Because who wants to starve themselves all lifelong, even though it makes you live longer, uh, by using a 16-hour fast. Which means, basically, at 6 p.m., you can start fasting. All through the night, you're sleeping, ideally, most of the time. And then when you get up in the morning, don't eat. Don't eat when you first get up. Because most people aren't hungry anyway. Wait a couple hours, and about 10 in the morning, you eat again. So yeah, but two things are wrong. No one stops eating at 6 p.m. So that's unrealistic, A. Yeah. And B, I do. At 6 p.m., well, well, you yeah. get up at 3 in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, we've taught our whole lives that breakfast is the biggest part, biggest, yeah. most important meal. And this is counterintuitive no, I, to that. I think that was a marketing hype, that, that, that you have to eat breakfast. The fact of the matter is, when you get up, if you're not hungry, do not eat till you are hungry. Yeah. And when you train your body, you can go 16 hours without difficulty. But i got to say, I don't go 16 hours. I intermittent fast. Yeah. Right? I go 12 hours. Well, so I stop eating my dinner at 8. When I get up in the morning, I'm not hungry like most right, Americans right. aren't. By about 8 in the morning, I have breakfast. And if you eat careful of what you eat when you're allowed to eat, because you can eat a lot of stuff in those 12 hours that's left, then you can actually do that 12 hours, and it seems to work. Okay, well, and before we guys, we have some ideas of what you could eat in your window, but why does it work? What is the, what is the body process that happens that makes you're, a difference? You're tricking your body to go from ketosis to normal use of sugar, back to ketosis. So the body wants to use sugar. But if you only use sugar, you get fat and your brain doesn't work so well and your body begins to fall apart. If you could half the time be in a moment where your body can just sort of zero out, reset, your hormones calm down, then it works. And you asked me a very important question, and which I think we'll get to with, yeah. with Hoda, which is about whether you can cheat in the time you're supposed to be fasting. Oh, yeah. Well, can you? I mean, like, could I have, we like, I like to put half and half in my coffee. Does that break the fast? I have a Tic Tac. Does that break the fast? We did an experiment. We actually took our medical unit, six people, yes. energetic folks, and we had them fast overnight, and then we gave them exactly what you asked, two teaspoonfuls of half and half, right? About 25 calories. Yeah. And it turns out, <laughs> well, that is, it's a splash of, of, of something no, no, in your coffee. No, nothing, and it turns out that for the first half hour, is a little bit of an increase in your sugar, not much, and it goes back to baseline within an hour. So I think, although it's not true for everybody. We need a whole for, show for this. For most people, yeah. but most people can do that. But I wouldn't have that an hour before you're done your fast. What's okay. the point? But in the, you know, three hours before you're done, do it. Okay, I have five seconds. It I'm going to eat up, <laughs> unless you're fasting. We're back after your local news.